All right, hello, and welcome back to yet another analysis. So this time, Magnus Carlsen against Hikaru Nakamura from the 11th round in uh, the Skilling Open. This is the last day. This is when it will be decided who advances and who is eliminated. So let's take a look at this game. E4, E5, Magnus went for bishop C4, known as uh, the bishop's opening. Nakamura played knight of six. Attacking the pawn on e4, d3 from uh, from Magnus, and here he Nakamura is invited to play bishop c5, which will transpose into an Italian game. For example, knight of three, knight c6. But he went for c6, which is the other main move here. The point is that he wants to play play d5 quickly, take control over the center, and this is another huge line with a lot of theory. And of course the players are aware of that and they play quite quickly here knight f3 d5 bishop b3 i can mention that you do not really want to take because then black gets his uh, his center and after bishop b5 check black can simply play bishop d7 and uh, white is forced to take and then, uh, and then black takes back with protection of the e5 pawn with an excellent position so e takes d5 is not really possible here Bishop e3 is the main move. Bishop e4 check. Bishop d2. Bishop takes. Knight takes. Queen c7. Protecting the pawn on e5. Castles. D takes e4. And um, I'm, I, I suppose black could also simply play, uh, play castle here. This is uh, another type of position. Rook e1 is uh, very logical. Threatening to take on d5 and then later on e5. And then this can be defended with knight bd7, and we have a fairly, fairly equal position at our hands here with uh, chances for both sides. But Nakamura went for d takes e4. Magnus uh, played at knight g5, which is uh, a good move. He want he wants to t take back with uh, the knight while he's also attacking the pawn in f7. Uh, castles protects the pawn in f7. You may wonder if bishop g4 here is possible. This is always in the air when uh, this happens, and um, it definitely is. It looks like a very interesting move to me. Maybe simply queen e1, and then we would get something similar to the game after castles and knight takes e4. So castles, knight takes e4, knight d5. Nakamura does not want to take back. I'm not really sure why, but this is slightly more pleasant uh, for white, and you could then say that white is uh, slightly, slightly better. So knight d5 is, uh, is another attempt to maybe play h6, trace away the knight on g5, put the knight on f4 eventually. Also, when he plays h6, he's then free to play bishop e6, and then he is quite okay. And that's why Magnus already strikes in the center here with a d4, which I think is is an excellent move. h6, knight f3, bishop g4, pinning the knight on f3. I guess it's also possible to take here on uh, d4, where, where I'll gladly take with uh, with the queen. Uh, we have massive control here over the center, and um, we are definitely better here. Because after, after bishop e6, we can always play knight c5, and this is extremely unpleasant, and uh, clearly worse for, for black. So bishop g4 instead, d takes e5, knight d7, black will take back on f3 and on e5 any second, but Magnus plays h3, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes e5, and then Magnus plays rook e1. He's now looking at some um, discoveries against the queen here, rook e8. It's uh, more or less protecting against every single discovery because something like knight c5 is always going to be met by a queen takes e1 where black will be winning c3 protecting the pawn on b2 while also taking the important d4 square knight f6 and here magnus makes a, a very interesting exchange sacrifice or a blunder one of the two i honestly think it was uh, was a blunder the tactic that nakamura place is absolutely brilliant and I do not think Magnus thought he had enough for for the exchange 
I do think though that black has now comfortably equalized here. So, uh, for example, after knight takes f6, queen takes f6, this is definitely likely to end up in a, in a draw. So, maybe I wanted to complicate things a little bit with a rook a d1, but unfortunately, it doesn't quite work. So, let's take a look. So, was it a blunder? Was it an, an exchange sacrifice? Who knows? But Nakamura played knight takes e4. Rook takes d7, and here, the brilliancy, the only reason why this works, knight g5, and this is an excellent move. So I'm sure Magnus saw this, so he played queen e3, and uh, he might have thought, like, well, this is very good for me, because if black is a force to move the queen away, we can simply play queen d2, and this, queen, uh, this rook here on d7 is extremely strong with massive pressure on f7 and b7. So that doesn't quite work out for black. And same thing happens if we take, we'll, we'll simply take back. And again, we're attacking these uh, these pawns and black is, uh, is lost. But unfortunately for Magnus, Nakamura has this brilliant move, knight f3 check. And the point here is that if we take back with, uh, with the, if we take with the queen, queen takes e1 is coming. So we're forced to take with, uh, with the pawn. The problem is then when we take with the pawn, queen g5 is coming with an excellent, excellent uh, discovery here on the queen. And uh, thus, Magnus is forced to take the queen. And here, Nakamura takes the rook with check. So it's a very nice combination, a four move uh, combination right there. And this gives Nakamura an advantage with an exchange, an exchange up. Uh, an important factor is that Magnus King, uh, Magnus's king here is extremely weak. This can be exploited if, if Nakamura gets both of his rooks down the, the first rank here, which is uh, essentially the winning plan, but it's easier said than done. So Nakamura played a5, protecting the pawn on a7, a4 from, uh, from Magnus, g6 by Nakamura, wants to give uh, his king some air. Bishop c4 prevents rook e2. Also b3 is uh, possible in a few lines. King g7, rook uh, c7. And here Nakamura misses his, uh, his big chance to uh, to take a huge step towards uh, towards victory. And it's certainly a hard move to find. But we did talk about this idea earlier on. Doubling the rooks on the first rank. So rook c1 here would be an excellent Excellent move. Point is that we want to play rook d8 followed by rook d1 at some point. But the problem is that Nakamura, uh, that Magnus is attacking the pawn on f7. So that can't really be done yet. But rook c1 is a great waiting move because we're also threatening to play rook c2 followed by rook takes b2. So for example, the line could go rook takes c6. And here I like to move rook b8. Attacking the pawn on b2, b3, and a very important move, f5. There is no longer possible to play rook c7 and attack the pawn on f7, and this is going to be quite decisive. f4 is also possible later, and you can see that the white's king is extremely, extremely weak. So, for example, rook a6. I would think that rook d8 here is more or less uh, winning for for white. Very close, at least with f4 and rook d1 coming, and the mate is very hard to avoid. So rook c1 would have been a very good move. What happens in the game is that Nakamura plays a rook e5, and then Magnus takes on c6, rook b8, but you again, you see the problem. He plays rook c7, and he attacks on f7. So Magnus, uh, uh, no Nakamura, sorry, he plays rook takes b2, Magnus takes on f7 with the bishop, and here Magnus has enough compensation. It's quite difficult for Nakamura to get anything going here with rook b1 and rook e1. It's simply too slow, so he, he tries rook e1, but then Magnus plays bishop c4 check, king h8, and a perpetual arises after rook c8, king g7, king g7 rook c7, king h8, rook c8, and... Uh, with a draw. 
Uh, king h6 here would have been would have been a huge mistake after bishop g8, and after g4 h4, black is the one that's made it, not white, which is quite hilarious. The line could go takes takes g5, and then rook h7, king g6, h5, king f6, rook f7, king e5, and rook e7 with the rook hanging on e1. Interesting a turn of events, of course, so that Nakamura is never gonna fall for that. If he was going to play rook f, uh, if he was going to play king f7, king f6, he would lose after rook f7 check and rook e7. And if he was going to play king f8, rook f7 here is uh, a draw as well. For example, king e8 and then rook g7. And uh, Magnus will take both of these pawns, at least the pawn on g6. And it's uh, going to end in a draw. For example, rook b1, only move to avoid mate is f4, but this is enough for um, for a draw. So very interesting game that ended in, uh, in a draw between Magnus and Nakamura, who are both on their way to qualify to the knockout stage in... Skilling open.